All right, here we are. Welcome everyone to the Focused Investor. I'm Rich Betke, a co-founder of Real Wealth. You're probably aware of that. Uh, and I'm super stoked that you're here. This is the 18th year that I have delivered the Focused Investor, uh, how to create your year. And this is about how to make 2024 your best year yet. So we're gonna look at 2024. We're gonna look into the future of where you wanna be. If you've done this webinar before, if you've done it 18 times, <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you for everyone who's here. You know, there's a lot of people, I've just been hearing this a lot from people just saying, you know, I wish I had financial independence. I wish I made more money. I wish I could afford a down payment on a house. I wish I was in better shape, all these things. And it, and it drives me crazy because then I watch a lot of these same people who say that, and then they, they don't do anything about it. They don't get clarity about what they want. They don't really write it down. They don't set that intention for the year or for what they want. And most importantly, they don't take action on it. Uh, so that you're here today, uh, I commend you for that. If this is the time that you've done this multiple times, the Focus Investor webinar, you know the results of it. You know that setting a clear intention, getting clear, and going after it during the year and making yourself better, making your life better, uh, improving your financial situation, all that, it all comes down to applying yourself, getting the focus and doing something about it. So, so thank you for being here, someone who is committed to being better, uh, to making your life better. Uh, I acknowledge that it's rare, <laughs> you know, it's very rare that people do that. So uh, thank you for being here, really cool. And you know, it's if you've done this 18 times, if you've done this three times, if this is your first time, it all comes down to this, uh, repeating something. Um, I, I'm not gonna turn my camera off as we go into this. Uh, if I was uh, my wife, Kathy, and that attractive, I'd leave my camera on, but uh, I'm not. So I'm gonna turn my camera off right now, and then we're gonna dive right into this, because this is all about you. I'm gonna be asking you a ton, ton of questions today. You're gonna be doing a lot of writing, a lot of thinking, a lot of uh, planning about what's next and coming up with a game plan, um, maybe a one-pager, maybe a three-pager game plan for your year ahead, how to make it the best year of your life so far. All right, I'm gonna turn my camera off and then we're gonna dive right in. All right, let's go. Uh, so, you know, you're in a different place now than you were a year ago, right? Uh, think about over the last 12 months, how you've grown. Hopefully you did the Focus Investor webinar last year. You set that personal quality that you wanted to achieve and develop. You set some big goals for the year. Um, and hopefully you did the year completion, which we'll talk about in a little bit here. Uh, if you didn't do that, I'm gonna let you know how you can do that year completion process uh, that I did a couple of weeks ago. Um, but you know, you're in a different place now than you were last year, but we still need that consistent inspiration, motivation. Um, at Zig Ziglar said it so well. People often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. And that's why we recommend it daily. <laughs> and I just love that. I, I'm gonna share that every year because that is what this is all about. We need consistent motivation. We need something to lift us up. You know, as humans, we have a built-in negativity bias. It's really easy to focus on what's wrong, on problems, what frustrates us. So we have to shift out of that negativity bias that has served us as we evolved, but today's a different day. You know, we don't have those same threats that we had 50,000 years ago. Uh, we, instead of making things up, you know, a great book that I'm reading right now is called The Comfort Crisis. And it's all about how as human beings, we've become way too comfortable, not doing hard things, not being challenged. And that creates more depression, more anxiety. And so you gotta kind of challenge yourself to do hard things and to grow. And motivation and inspiration are a part of that. So I'm constantly seeking ways to inspire myself to learn, to grow, and hopefully I can share some of that with you today. Okay, so we've got a lot of cover, a lot to cover today. I'm gonna jump right into this. So make sure that you have your laptop ready to go or a pen and paper. You're gonna take a lot of notes here and we will go right into this. You know, before we dive in, you know, this is about real wealth and um, not the company real wealth. This is about your real wealth. Um, but the company real wealth that we founded 
uh, now over 20 years ago in 2003, um, we have grown to over 70,000 members. We've had a lot of people do this webinar or live. I've done this live at our live events uh, and our annual events sometimes. Um, we've also just, I mean, I'm just blown away at this, that we've helped investors acquire. Now we're up to 1.3 billion in assets acquired by our members. That's you guys, so awesome work on that. Um, we've produced 900, well, today's 956 free educational webinars, and we donate 10% of our profits to charities that change the world. So through the Real Wealth Foundation, uh, we've raised over and donated over $802,000. Uh, we're going to be closing in. We're going to surpass a million dollars this year in donating to these charities that change the world. So I guess this is just a big thank you to you guys because without you, we wouldn't have accomplished all this and made such a difference. And we called our company Real Wealth because as you probably know, Real Wealth to us is when you have the money and the freedom to live life on your own terms. And I asked you this in the year completion webinar a couple of weeks back, what is real wealth for you? I want you to keep that in mind as we go through this today. So what real wealth is for you? Just, it's different for different people. It could be more time with your family. It's that financial abundance. It could be giving back. It, be, it could be the awesome car, the home, being able to travel all over the world. Um, so we, set out to help people create real wealth and we said let's how are we going to measure this a few years ago we said how do we know if we're really fulfilling our purpose at real wealth helping people achieve real wealth so we created what we call the real wealth assessment maybe you've taken it maybe not if you haven't it is a 20 question assessment where you can really get a score of how you rate your level of real wealth right now so it's at realwealth.com forward slash assessment so you might want to write that down. And after this, if you haven't taken it, go in and take it. It takes just maybe five, 10 minutes, 20 questions, and they range everything from your financial house in order, your financial team, uh, are you job optional, and all these different ratings, and it even goes into your relationships, your health, all that other in important stuff that really creates a life of real wealth. So go ahead and, and take that after this at some point, realwealth.com forward slash assessment. If you have taken it before, our goal at Real Wealth is to help people get to over 80, a score of 80. And you can see there that people who do it the first time usually score between 50 to 70. Um, we see the average being closer to 60. And then scores that are higher than 80 are unusual. So our goal is to have people take it for the first time. If you got like a 62 or something, what we want to do is help you get to over 80. So you work with your investment counselor, you uh, get our free education, you attend our webinars, you do things like this, the Focus Investor, and you work over the year 2024 and then take the assessment again and see where you are. Our goal is to get you to over 80. Then we know that we're fulfilling our, prom our purpose and our promise and it just fires our whole team up. It's what we're all about. So if you have taken it before, go ahead and take it again and see how much your score has improved. Okay, so let's take a look at what my goal is today for you. My goal today going into 2024 is to help you gain clarity and to create a clear and simple plan that you implement, you put into action for more joy, fulfillment, and real wealth in 2024 and beyond. I know this works. I'm stoked on it. I've had so many people reach out to me over the years with emails, with letters, even cards uh, at the end of the year saying how this has transformed their life. Uh, people come up to me at live events and tell me what, what they've done since they did the uh, Focus Investor. So uh, I'm really excited about this because, you know, we have to do this. It's so important. Here's the problem. The problem that I've seen is that without clear intentions and a clear plan, you'll lack focus, you'll lack direction, and you'll waste time. And then you're going to decrease your happiness and your, your well-being. You know, Yoda said it so well, what you focus on becomes your reality. If you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you always got. And what got you here won't get you there. All these sayings are there for a reason. Cliches happen because they are truths. All right. So you're here, you're doing it. And that's the problem that so many people experience, but not you because you're here. So here's the plan for today. 
Uh, in coaching, I've been coaching for many, many years. I started coaching in 1996. I've coached hundreds of clients, probably thousands now. And this is the process I go through. I shared this in the year completion webinar, but it starts with envisioning. And that's what we're doing today. We're envisioning where you want to go in the future and in the year 2024. We're also going to look at that green arrow about strategize. You're going to come up with a strategy today or the start of it on where you want to go and how you're going to accomplish it in 2024 and beyond. And we will also look at implementation. How are you going to take that vision and the goals, create a strategy, and then how are you going to take action on it? How are you going to Im implement that plan? Uh, the orange arrow is all about observing what's working, what's not working. We did that at the end of the year, um, but you'll do that every single week, and we'll talk about that more in a bit. We follow the same process at Real Wealth, and we have for many, many years. Uh, honestly, I, Kathy and I do it with our girls, with our family. Uh, we sit down every year, and we go through this. It was so cute. I, our younger daughter, Krista, uh, the other day was with one of her best friends sitting at our table watching the replay of the uh, focused investor completing your year and they were doing it together and it just man it just warmed my heart and made me smile because uh, it's it's carrying forward so we do the same process with our whole team at Real Wealth about what worked the last year how did we better serve our members did we hit our goals if not why what did we learn and then we also set those intentions um, this Monday and Tuesday we have a two-day in-person retreat here at our home with our leadership team to talk about what's next for 2024 how can we better serve you our members and how can we grow and how can we accomplish these awesome goals all right so today is all about you uh, I'm just I'm going to see you as the expert in your life that's me as a coach uh, it's not to give you the answers it's to help draw out as Albert said the most important thing is to never stop questioning. He was a pretty smart dude. So I think we should listen to Albert and not stop questioning. So I'm going to ask you a ton of questions today and you're going to take a lot of notes. So let's dive right into this because one of the most important questions you can ask yourself and that I can ask you is what do you really want? Ask yourself, what do I really want? Do that all the time. What do I want? What do I want? Um, and that's what we're going to look at today. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong with asking that question. Okay, so I mentioned this earlier. Did you do a year-end completion? Did you wrap up your 2023? It's all about bookending your year. It's all about how did you grow? How did you learn? How are you better this year than you were at the beginning of last year? So doing a year-end completion, it allows you to just pause, to slow down, to reflect, and to learn about you and your life. It allows you to assess the 10 major areas of your life. We'll talk about that in a moment as well. Uh, it also helps you learn from the past year, which helps you prepare and plan for the coming year. So hopefully you did that. It's not vital and necessary to do that before you do this webinar, um, but I would highly recommend that you go back and then you start keep, uh, keeping a journal, whether it's on your computer or in a binder. That's the way I do it. I just keep these, I print them out and put them in a binder of each year. Now I can go back 10 years, 15, 20 years and be, oh, that's what that year was about. And it just really, it makes your life feel like a life more well lived. It's really cool. It's like your own personal journal. Okay. So if you do, if you want to do that year end completion webinar, uh, you can find it right on our website. If you go to the learn tab and click on that and you'll see a drop down and it says webinars, recent webinars, uh, you'll find it right there, the focused investor, how to complete 2023 so you can create more real wealth in 2024. So you'll find it right there. Um, it's it's about an hour, a little bit less than an hour, maybe like a minute less. And uh, and it takes you, it walks you through the whole process of wrapping up your year. Um, so anyway, that's that. Hopefully you go check that out if you haven't done it already. I'm assuming a lot of you guys already attended it and that's why you're here to set your intentions for this year. So let's dive right into 2024. I know I'm going fast here. I know there's going to be times when you're like, God, Rich, will you just slow down? Will you just pause for a moment? I'm taking notes here. Sorry. No, can't do it because we have an hour here to get all this in. It's a lot. What you can always do is grab the replay. It'll be up tomorrow. You can watch the replay for different parts. Uh, but today you're going to get the most important stuff captured. So let's dive right into it. So this is all about envisioning. Remember on that uh, coaching circle where envisioning was at the top? That's what we're going to start with. Envisioning is all about looking to your future 
for the next steps today. So looking into the future, you can, we do this with our business. Where do we want to be at the end of the year? Where, where do we want to be in three years, five years, 10 years? And same thing with your life. This is what I've helped my coaching clients go through and we're going to dive right into it. So envisioning, obviously meaning to envision, uh, this is the way I see a vision. It's simply a very clear picture of what you see for yourself in the future if everything turns out just right. So not gremlin ridden where the gremlin's saying, well, you can't do that, or no, you've never done close to that before, whatever. It's like, no, you just sit, sit over there in the corner. We're gonna envision if everything turns out just right, okay? And the way we do this, and you know, here, you hear motivational speakers say this all the time, you gotta have a vision, you know, and when business books, they say have that vision. So often it's like, well, how do I do it? How do I create that clear vision? So this is my favorite way to do it. It's called future focus. And we are gonna take a little mental journey. And so if whether you're sitting in a cafe in Malibu, Chris, or you're, um, you're at home, you're at work in your cubicle, uh, if you're in your car, I'm not sure how you're going to do this. You're going to pull over to the side because this is going to be closed eyes. And this is something I've been taking my clients through for many, many years. I do it live when I give keynote speeches often to sometimes thousands of people. So I bring a little of this California woo woo into the room. So here we go. Um, this is a guided visualization. Uh, it takes maybe about 10 minutes. Uh, I do recommend closing your eyes. I, re I recommend getting in that comfortable position, whatever works for you. So go ahead and put your pen down, push your computer aside, um, get in a comfortable position. I would recommend sitting up straight, feet flat on the floor, your hands in your lap or at your side. And um, go ahead and just, let's slow down for a moment. Just let's start by closing your eyes and take a really deep breath down into your belly. and then let it go and just begin to focus on your breathing, breathing deep down, deep down into your belly. Let your belly push out, let your ribs expand. And just begin to focus on your breathing and notice how good it feels to just slow down and pause get present, relax your jaw, relax your forehead, relax your shoulders, moving down, relaxing your torso, your arms, letting everything relax, feeling more grounded, relax your legs, even your feet. Allowing yourself to be more relaxed and more comfortable. Now I want you to imagine that spot between your eyes and imagine there's a light there. And notice the color of the light between your eyes. Now imagine that colored light becoming a beam, a beam of light that extends from your forehead out toward space. And imagine following that beam of light out toward space. Moving up this beam of colored light, moving away from the earth, seeing the earth get smaller and smaller below you moving further out into space, into the quietness and the darkness of space, the peacefulness of space. As the earth moves further and further away, and now imagine, as you look up ahead, you notice another beam of light. It's a different color than the light that you followed out into space. And this beam of light is intersecting with the beam of light that you've been following. And now imagine following that other beam of light 
a different color. You're following that beam of light back toward Earth. And you realize that you're moving back toward Earth 10 years in the future. You're about to have the experience of seeing your life 10 years in the future. As you move down this beam of light, seeing the Earth getting bigger and bigger, this ball of blue and green with white clouds wisping around it, getting closer and closer to Earth, noticing where this beam of light is intersecting with Earth, following the beam of light down and landing on Earth. Notice where you land. Imagine looking around. And as you look up ahead, you notice a dwelling. And you realize this is the home of your future self. This is where you live 10 years in the future. Look at this home, the home of your future self. Notice what it looks like. Notice the colors, the design. Notice if there are trees or flowers around. Noticing the landscaping. Walk toward this home and toward the door of this home and do what you need to do to get someone to come to the door and realize that on the other side of this door is your future self. It's you 10 years in the future. As the door opens, notice this person, your future self, and notice the way they welcome you. Look at this person, your future self. Notice what they look like. Notice what they're wearing. This is you 10 years in the future. Look into your future self's eyes and get a sense of this person. And now your future self invites you to come inside for a conversation. As you walk inside this home, look around. Get a sense of who lives here. Notice if there are any photographs and notice the people in those photographs. As you walk into this home with your future self, notice the way they carry themselves. Get a sense of their energy, their vitality. And your future self invites you to sit down for a comfortable conversation. Sit down with your future self. And there are some questions that you would like to ask your future self, but begin with this question. Future self, in the last 10 years, what stands out most in your memory? And listen to what your future self has to tell you. And now ask your future self, what do I need to do to get from where I am to where you are? What would be helpful for me to know to get to where you are? And listen to what your future self has to say. Now, there are probably other questions you would like to ask your future self. So go ahead and take some time now to ask any other questions that you might have of your future self.
Okay. Now you realize it's time to go, but you also realize that you can come back here anytime. Your future self will always be there as a wise guide, a mentor. Make your way back to the door of this home with your future self. And before you leave, ask your future self this. What do people call you? What is a special name or a nickname that really speaks to who you are? Ask your future self what this name is and listen to their response. And now do whatever you want to do to say goodbye to your future self. And notice how your future self returns your farewell. Make your way back through the door. And as you look up ahead, you see the beam of light that took you here into the future. Imagine following that beam of light back up towards space, moving further and further into space, into the deep, dark space, traveling along this beam, and then imagine seeing that other beam of light that you first followed out into space. Follow that beam of light back toward Earth to the year 2024. Follow that beam of light back toward Earth as the Earth gets larger and larger. Moving down the beam, seeing where you are and coming down and landing back into your seat. Feeling refreshed, confident. Wiggle your fingers and toes. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Okay, maybe a big stretch to kind of get back in your body here and out of your head. <laughs> oh, but we're definitely going to stay in our heads here some. So now that is future self. If you've done it before, it's always good to go back. Um, you can do this in the future. I love to do this before I'm falling asleep or if I'm having a hard time falling asleep, I will just follow that beam of light and I'll go out sometimes five years, 10 years, 20 years into the future, meet with my future self, get that wise um, input, get some questions answered. It's a really powerful way to just envision the future. And more than anything, envisioning the future in this method is about who you are becoming, because that's what matters most. Who you become is the person who can accomplish all of these goals, the vision and all that. Uh, it's how you show up and who you are more than anything. Of course, you can always go in and go revisit your future self even a year from now or even three years from now, whatever works for you and say, hey, this is the big goal I'm working on. Can how do I, how am I going to do this? How can I accomplish this? And it's amazing because all you're doing is you're tapping into your subconscious mind, the mind where um, there's so many possibilities, there's infinite possibilities. And you tap into this, you know, much wiser part of your brain because, you know, the conscious brain is only such a small part of the brain. The subconscious is a recording of your whole life. So it has so many more answers than you're aware of, than we're aware of. So this is a powerful exercise. So now it's time to write. So go ahead and pick up your pen or get your laptop ready because uh, I'm going to kind of go over what, what we talked about here. So your future self's home. You came down on that beam of light 10 years in the future. If you didn't see anything super clear, you're not someone who visualizes well, no problem at all. You're exercising that muscle. Um, you might just be more left-brained. Um, Right brain people tend to be more of that visual, creative. They can see things like this easier. I've done this with a lot of people. Some people see it crystal clear, everything, every detail. Some people it's very foggy, but usually you do get some answers from this. But for you, write down, my future self's home is, and then just write a couple notes about it. Where was it? 
Is it the same home you're in now? Is it a new place? Is there anything that stood out about it? Like what kind of person lives there? Is it big and strong, grounded? Is it all glass and very visual and light? Whatever you saw there, and this can be amazing. Kathy and I have done, you know, done this for many, many years. And Kathy actually saw the home we're in now in Malibu over 25 years ago. Crazy. She wrote it down too. And she even said it was in Malibu. We were living in the San Francisco Bay Area at the time. Um, so it's kind of freaky and weird and wild, but something happens when you set that intention and I don't know what we're tapping into. So that's the real woo-woo part of it. Okay, so you got your future self's home, where, where it might be, what it looked like, what you noticed. Did you see any people in the photographs when you walked in? And then write down what your future self is like. When, that, when you open the door or they open the door, what was your future self like? Go ahead and write that down. So you can say my future self was, and you can write down what they were wearing, how they greeted you, what their energy was like. Were they in better shape? Were they in worse shape? <laughs> I've heard both. How was their, their whole essence, I guess. And then your future self, go ahead and write any of these notes. Again, sorry, we have to go quick here. You can flesh this out a little bit more later. And you can also go revisit your future self for more clarity. Um, but then you walked inside the house with your with your future self and looked around. There was photographs with people in them. You walked in and you sat down. And then the question you asked your future self is, in the last 10 years, what stands out most in your memory? So go ahead and write that down. What did your future self say to that? And in your notes, you might want to say, in the last 10 years, my future self said, or the memory was, so you remember, what was that memory? Go ahead and write that down. And often what that memory is, is something that is important to you. And it's like, what's the big important thing in your life? What's the memory that you want to create that you want your future self to have? Okay, so you got that down. Again, we're going to just keep moving along here and make our time. Then you ask your future self, what do I need to do to get from where I am to where you are? Again, if you didn't hear the answer clearly, it's fine. You can always go back and ask it again. You can watch the replay of this and listen to future self again and go, go and do it. But if you did get an answer, what did your future self say? Here's what you need to do to get from where you are to where I am now. And write that down. And this is usually just that wise advice in our subconscious mind that we know on a deep level. This is what I need to do to keep moving toward what I want. This is what I need to do. And this is who I need to be. And the being, the being is a big part of it. So you ask yourself, future self, some other questions too. Um, before we go into that, and I want you to write those answers down too. Why don't you just write down who is your future self? When you said, what is that name? What's that nickname that came up? Write that down. When you said, what's, a, what's your nickname or an, an, another name you're called by or that kind of describes what kind of person you are, whatever it is. If you had a name, write it down, please. If not, again, no big deal. But more important is what kind of person is your future self? Who are you in 10 years? Maybe it's one word. Maybe it's a short phrase. But who is it that you want to become? And who do you want to be now? <laughs> Most important. By knowing this, who you want to become you can create it now. You can start focusing on it in 2024. So that way, 10 years from now, 2034, you're like, oh yeah, no, definitely, this is who I am. You can be that person. And then you also ask your future self your own questions. So what else? What other questions did you ask? Go ahead and write those down. And what advice did you get or what feedback or input or answers did you get from your future self? when you ask your own questions. 
I'll give you a moment in silence to go ahead and write that down. Okay. Yes, we're moving quick. <laughs> so one thing my daughter, uh, Krista, said, I said, any feedback on that year of completion? She goes, yeah, I wish, wish you would go slower and give us more time to answer things. I'm like, I know, I so want to, but we only have an hour. So you can, she was pausing it, so you can do that on the replay. Okay, so that is future self. Hopefully you got a lot of good stuff from there. Uh, again, you can just keep going with that and really powerful and valuable. And so envisioning, um, what do you envision for this decade? For the next 10 years, you just saw your future self, you met your future self, you asked some questions. Um, just top of mind, jot down a few things of what you envision for this decade. In the year 2034, how is your life going to be different? What will you have accomplished? Who's the person you are becoming? What does your family look like? Your friendships? your business, if you have your own business, your career, your portfolio, your wealth, all that good stuff. Anything that comes up for you about what you envision over this next decade, go just go ahead and write it down. It's all part of that creation process in your mind. That's where it all starts. If you got a few bullet points there, hopefully, then you can continue on and just start thinking about what do you envision for this year. You've probably already started giving it some thought about this 2024, nice even year. What's this year about for you? So what do you envision for 2024? We're going to go deeper into this, like setting your big three goals and all that stuff, but we're going big picture here. So let's talk about goals. Dr. Tal Ben-Shahar is a university professor at Harvard University. He's written several amazing books. This is my favorite good book called Happier. And uh, it's a New York Times bestseller. It sold you know, thousands and thousands of copies, really powerful stuff. I've reread it several times. And his students and his class at Harvard is the most attended class in all of Harvard University's history really kind of mind-blowing, a, a class on happiness, but constantly researching happiness and what has us human beings be happier. And it all boils down to this, from his students and himself doing the research, this is what he says, to be happy, we need to identify and pursue goals that are both pleasurable and meaningful. Meaning that goals that are pleasurable, to, that we're moving toward them, it's not about just having a goal and saying, got to accomplish that goal. Good. Done. Next goal. It's about, you know, he calls it getting to, you know, having a goal is like the top of the mountain. You don't want to just be like, I've got to get to the top of the mountain, then I'll be happy. But you also don't want to be meandering around the mountain with no direction. Um, he says to really be happy, you want to enjoy the journey on the way up the mountain toward the peak. So that's what we want for our goals. We want a goal that is going to be uh, compelling. That's going to be like, that's awesome. I want that. It's going to make me better. It's going to make my life better. But I'm also going to enjoy the process on the way there. I'm going to be stoked each week. I move toward that goal. As I get better, my life gets better. Everything gets better. So that is, uh, this is now, now we're going into the strategizing. So we're setting goals. We're looking at the focus of that. We went through envisioning. Now we're in strategizing, really getting clarity on what you really want and how we, we got the clarity on what you really want, but we started the process. And now we're going to strategize on how to get there. So the first thing is setting a theme for the year. Really powerful. This book, one word that will change your life. Um, this is what they say. A theme creates simplicity, clarity, and life change. It transforms not only what you do, but who you become. So think about that. What is the theme that you want for 2024? When I, we did our year completion a couple of weeks ago, I asked you, what was your theme for 2023, the actual theme for the year? Now this is being proactive and thinking ahead what do you want the theme to be for this year? So another way to look at it, I, I like to look at it as like if they were to write a, 
book about your life this year. Now, if you were going to write a book saying, this is what my life's going to be like in 2024, what would you want the title of the book to be or a movie? So what's the theme you want? Um, for example, let's see, my theme for 2024, I already know it, uh, is it's embrace. One word is embracing. It's the opposite of resisting. So it's about embracing people. It's about embracing life. It's about embracing focus. It's about embracing discipline. So that's my word. But I've heard different one words themes for the year. Um, I've heard the breakthrough. I've heard rising from the ashes. <laughs> I've heard um, discipline is another one for, is a theme. It's almost like a personal quality, but that that's another one I've heard recently. So go ahead and get get your theme down. What do you want the theme to be for 2024? It doesn't have to be one word. Um, it could be multiple words, but whatever is going to be like, this is what this year is about for me. Hopefully you got that written down. Let's keep going. And then as we strategize, now it's about who you want to become. And just like that last slide, they said it's not about, it transforms not only what you do, but who you become. So Personal quality is about who you want to become, what area of your personality and who you are do you want to develop this year? Uh, so there's some examples right there. Maybe this is the year that you focus on developing your courage. So you start taking a risk a day or something like that to develop your courage. Maybe it's uh, you want to develop your authenticity, just showing up more as you, not putting on any type of act or facade and just being authentically you. Um, you can see all the different examples there. What about you? Your personal quality that you most want to develop. That's the just one. Try to focus on too many things. It's like trying to, what's the old saying, try, chase two rabbits, you end up with none. So this is what's the one personal quality that you want to develop this year? Go ahead and write that down. And I'll share my personal quality last year was wise stoic. I wanted to be a wise stoic. And what that means to me is to be wise from experience, uh, stoic, meaning I don't let life push me around or change my mindset, that I'm calm, I'm present, uh, no matter what happens to me on the outside, it can't affect my inside. So that was a wise stoic, and it was it was really good. I just did a completion a year completion call with my coach, who I talked to once a month, and uh, I was really stoked on that, that some years I set a personal quality and do, don't do so great. Um, this year, Last year, it went really well. And then for 2024, um, personal quality I'm focused on is curiosity. So being curious about people, being curious about people's opinions, just asking questions rather than uh, assuming. So curiosity is my personal quality. So whatever works for you, I hope you got that written down. Now let's keep going. So your big three for 2024, as you travel down this road of 2024, what are your big three? What do I mean by big three? If you have attended this webinar before, you know exactly what I mean. It's the rule of three. It's the big three goals that you have set for 2024. So it's the reason why is if you have too many goals, you know, you can have a ton of goals. It's great. Write them all down, get them out of your head and onto paper. Um, but you are the human mind can only effectively hold on to three main thoughts at any time. Uh, it's been proven. There's been university research on it. Uh, the most is four people who can really hold on to them a lot, they say. But three is what I like to go through. It's the way we set our goals at Real Wealth for our team. Each person takes on three big goals for the year, three big goals for the quarter. The reason why is because your brain can only effectively hold on to those three main thoughts and it gets confused when you have too many. So by having your three big goals in your mind, it's like I could wake you up in the middle of the night and say, hey, what are your big three goals for the year? And you would wake up out of a stupor and say, oh, my big three, this, this, and this. And the reason why that's so powerful is because then you tap into your RAS, your reticular activating system in your brain, which is that filtering device where it's just like if you walked into a room of a whole bunch of people and all of a sudden and, you know, everyone's talking, it's loud and all that. All of a sudden someone says your name, you hear it. That's your reticular activating system at work. And another example of this, I think it's a great one, is like say you say, I want to buy a 
a red BMW or something like that, all of a sudden you start seeing red BMWs everywhere, right? <laughs> That's your reticular activating system at work. It's like filters out every other car and it shows you what you want. So by having your big three goals in your mind at all times, you start to attract the people, the opportunities, the next steps and all that. So you start to see it more effectively uh, instead of having trying to have like 50 goals in your head, you're just not going to be on. Your antennas will not be as, as ex extended. Cool? Okay, so write down just, you know, first thing, what comes up for you. You can always change this later, but your big three for 2024, what are they going to be? Go ahead and write those down. My big three for 2024, my big three most important goals are, and of course, I would recommend having a professional one, one for your, whatever it is, your business, your income, your wealth creation, financial freedom, whatever it might be. Another one I would highly recommend having it be a personal about um, something personal. It could be relationship based. It could be your health and fitness. And then the third could be either one of those. It might be another professional goal. It might be another personal goal. But just kind of keep a mix. Just so many people set three goals for all like money focused or business focus. I'm just saying mix it up a little bit. Okay. Good stuff. Hopefully you got those down. Again, sorry for having to go so quickly here. But again, you can come back to it. And just remember the rule of three. Have your big three. Right. You know, if you're writing down a whole bunch of goals, that's great. And then just circle the ones that are going to be your big three that are going to be your primary focus. And I'll explain why in a little bit. Um, one of those reasons you want the big one, like what is the big game changer goal that you have for 2024? Uh, Gary Keller, who uh, is the founder of Keller, Keller Williams, the largest real estate company in the world. He also wrote this with Jay Papazan, who I got to meet last year. Really cool guy. Him and his wife. Um, this is what he says. When everything feels urgent and important, everything seems equal. We become active and busy, but this doesn't actually move us any closer to success. Activity is often unrelated to productivity and busyness rarely takes care of business. So again, it's not having a lot of goals, not focusing on a lot of things. Get What's that one thing that would be the game changer for you? So in your big three, look at those. If you were to accomplish one of those that would be the game changer that would really take your life to another level um, of happiness and success and fulfillment and real wealth. Maybe just put a star next next to that one. And here's that process I was talking about. So you got your big three for the year. Again, you can come back and narrow this down and clean it up. But once you've got your big three for 2024, those are your big three annual goals. You can have your sub goal somewhere else. But you got your big three annual. Then every quarter, and this we do the same thing at Real Wealth, every quarter you say, okay, these are my three annual goals, A, B, and C. What am I gonna do this quarter toward goal A? What am I gonna do toward goal B? And what am I going to accomplish toward goal C? So you set that at the beginning of every quarter. So you got three months, a 90-day focus. You got 13 weeks, and it just keeps you focused on a sub-goal. Instead of taking on this huge goal, you're just chunking it down. At the beginning of every month, you say, okay, this is my quarterly goal that I set for these three goals. What am I gonna do this month? Over the next 30 days, what am I gonna do for goal A, B, and C? At the beginning of each week, this is when you say, okay, these are my monthly goals. What am I gonna do this week? What am I gonna do this week for goal A, B, and C? And I think it's great to have accountability around that. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then you have your daily goals. Start each day read over your annual goals, uh, or at least look at your weekly goals and say, okay, these are my, my three weekly goals. What am I gonna do today? What am I gonna do for goal A, goal B, goal C? It just simplifies it and it makes it more understandable, less overwhelming, and helps improve your focus. And it's kind of the process that you're going through these goals. Just really think about what do you want to create? What is it that you really wanna create this year? You met your future self, you saw your life in the future, what do you want to create this year? What really matters to you on a deep level, not what anyone else thinks? What really is going to bring you more joy and fulfillment in your life and what excites you? If the goal is not exciting, 
you're going to start on it and then you're going to drop it. So what really excites you? This, those four questions are like a simple filter um, for setting goals to make sure that they're solid, good goals. Okay, let's move into financial freedom. Uh, I'll just go through this really quickly. There's a, just kind of the steps of financial freedom. You're probably fully aware of this if you're a member of Real Wealth. It's a lot of people start at cash flow negative, where you are making, you're spending more than you make. Then you move into cash flow neutral, where you're like you're making enough to cover your lifestyle expenses, uh, just enough in your in your income and your earning. Then you get to a place of cash flow positive, where you're actually, you know, you're keeping your spending in check. You have more money at the end of the month than you spent, uh, and then you can take that and you can direct it into investments. We all know this at Real Wealth. Um, putting it into assets are going to bring you positive cash flow, and they're going to grow your wealth over time. And then you get to a place eventually of financial freedom, where you have enough assets that are bringing in passive income, whether that be real estate or your portfolio of stocks or and or I should say. Um, a business that you've started that gets you a place of financial freedom. So I know that is that's the key, that's the goal, that's what we're all about at Real Wealth. Uh, so what about you? How will you improve your wealth this year and your financial freedom? So go ahead and write that down. What's what's the major thing that you're going to do this year to help you take a step or two or three toward financial freedom? If you're already there, you already have financial freedom, you're job optional, congratulations, you're in the top, top, you know, small percentage. But if you're not there yet, what is it that you're going to do this year? And write that down. And what about other areas of your life? So you got your big three for 2024 written down. You want to look at the why behind those. Once you have those written down, little homework here is why and maybe you just write that down to each goal uh, why do you want it and really give some thought to that think about the obstacles that might get in your way to get there a lot of research has been done on that Gabrielle Odigen has done a lot of work uh, she's a professor that's reached uh, researched uh, how people set goals and how they accomplish goals and when you look at your obstacles ahead of time right when you set the goal your chances of achieving that goal go up dramatically. I think it's something crazy. It's like 82% of the people that they've studied who didn't look at the obstacles, um, the people who did look at the obstacles ahead of time had an 82% uh, chance of achieving those goals. Um, and then feel it. The reason I wrote feel it is like when you imagine that goal, when you think about that goal, really feel the process. Like I'm going to be doing this. This is my ritual. This is my process. This is what I'm going to do. This is what it's going to feel like when I get there. This is who I'm going to be. Okay. I know we're going quick. I, uh, when I talked about those other areas of life for setting goals, this is what we did in the year completion. You'll see that you probably already did this. Um, there's some links there. If you want to write them down, if you want to download a life wheel, but these are just 10 major areas of your life. I think it's a great idea to just Look at each of these and think about how satisfied I am, am I in each area and which one really needs attention. Where do I need to set my big three? And if one of these is a real low satisfaction level, it's like you might want to put some focus on that to be a little bit more balanced. Okay, more writing for you. Who are the three people that can help you along the way? Maybe it comes to mind right away. But for your big three goals that you set for 2024, who are the three people that can help you? If you can only think of one now, that's fine. Write it down. Who's that one person that's most important that's going to help you accomplish that goal? Write that person's name down. If you can think of three now, awesome. If not, just write down who are the three people that can help me. So often we act like the Lone Ranger. We think we have to do it ourselves. But so often, a great book is Who Not How by Dan Sullivan. Um, it's all about finding those who's in your life that can help you. Instead of saying, how am I going to do this? You say, who can help me do this? Who do I need to help me? Okay, so hopefully you have at least one name down there. If not, keep searching, keep thinking, keep putting it out there. And then what are the three risks that you must take in this new year in order to live the life you envision. 
So that life you envision, your future self, your plan for 2024, what you envision for this year, what are the three risks you must take? Where do you need to get out of your comfort zone? Where do you have to develop your courage? So write down that. You might wanna just write down what are the three risks I have to take in this year? And then come back to that. Again, I think you could spend another hour or two on this. Just you know, I'm when I do this process, I probably put in four or five hours, not all in the same session, but broken up, really come up with a game plan for a year. Okay, let's talk a little bit about habits and rituals. Uh, FM Alexander, thank you for this one. P people do not decide their futures, they decide their habits, and their habits decide their futures. I am a huge fan of habits and rituals. Actually, I actually have a friend who said, Rich, um, you should spell rituals R-I-C-H-U-A-L-S because <laughs> I'm so into them because I know they work. They've transformed my life. They've transformed the life of my clients. So it's all about doing something today that your future self will thank you for. Habits and rituals, whatever you want to call them, uh, they're actions that are done on a regular basis to improve your health, your wealth, and or your spirit. They are like exercise. One hard workout won't do much for you, but a little bit on a regular basis can be transformational. And you start to slowly change your neural structure. And this is, mm, I love this, just bringing the, the science of it and what happens. And you know, we know so much more today than we used to even, even five years ago. What we found is that through deliberate practice, the research has shown us, and now we can see this on a uh, super deep level, a micron level, um, it's neuroplasticity, which you're probably have heard that term before. It's that our, our mind is almost like plastic. It's like it can be molded, it can be improved, it can grow over time. We can get more intelligent over time, even into our, our older years uh, through myelination, where your brain lays down more myelin, it makes connections of neural pathways. When you do a ritual or a habit on a regular basis, you change your brain's makeup. Neurons that fire together, wire together. That's Hebb's law. And so each time you do something, you're laying down more myelin in your brain, and which is a substance that makes that like a dial-up connection, almost like a broadband connection. You do it over and over. It goes both ways. If you do something that's a bad habit over and over, it becomes ingrained and it becomes a habit. If you do something that's good for you and something you want to do over and over, it becomes easier and easier and it becomes a habit. So that's on the scientific level, that's the change. And this is what I love about this. Kelly McGonigal is a professor at Stanford University. Her course is on the science of willpower. And in this book, amazing book, The Willpower Instinct, she writes, studies have found that committing to any small, consistent act of self-control, improving your posture, cutting back on sweets, keeping track of your spending, can increase your overall willpower. And while these small self-control exercises may seem inconsequential, they appear to improve the willpower challenges we care about most, including focusing at work, taking good care of our health, resisting temptation, and feeling more in control of our emotions. So who doesn't want that, right? Who want, doesn't want to be more focused, <laughs> have better health, resist temptation? So that's the thing. So what I love about that is you can actually develop your willpower neurologically, like we just talked about, and uh, you got to do hard things. You got to do things that take willpower and your brain will respond and make you a more disciplined person with more willpower. Here's a great example of that. Um, 672,200 crunches, 56,450 push-ups, and 41,670 burpees. That's a lot. That is That seems exhausting. This is what I have done, and I'm going to explain why. Hans Florian's a good friend of mine. We've gone rock climbing together. I've known him for over 20 years now. He repeatedly set one of the most coveted speed records in the world on El Capitan. He did that with Alex Hunnell, the guy you probably know from the Academy Award winning movie Free Solo. Um, they took the record in two hours and 23 minutes, climbing up that massive face right there, a 3,000 foot face of El Capitan. It takes most people three to four days to do it, sleeping on the wall. They did it in two hours and 23 minutes. Amazing. Uh, so Hans loves to measure everything in time. 
That's why he does so well, but he does everything. He measures everything and tracks everything. Uh, he's an inspiration to me. Just talked to him yesterday, such a cool guy. Uh, one, and back in 2005, Hans said, hey, what do you think about doing 100 crunches a day every day? And we'll do that for 100 days. And I said, absolutely, sounds good, let's do it. We did that and it was so cool. He said, we said to each other, this is awesome, we wanna keep doing it. So he said, yes. And so we still do it to this day. So those six, that 672,000 crunches is just doing 100 crunches a day since August 2005 when we started. And then in 2008, I decided it was working so well that I added 10 push-ups a day. And then in 2012, I decided to add 10 burpees a day. So that is what it adds up to. But it's a great example for me of how much stronger and healthier and more fit my body is here at just about 60 years old. Um, if, if I had not done that, there's no way I would be at the fitness level I am today, breaking it down into small, regular things. And this is the meaning of the phrase atomic habits from the amazing book by James Clear. It's a regular practice or routine that is not only small and easy to do, but also the source of incredible power, a component of the system of compound growth. So it's about breaking these big things, tiny changes, remarkable results. So what about you? Habits and rituals. So for you to improve your health, and your wealth and your happiness, what habit can you put in place? And I, I'd say stick with the rule of three. Don't take on more than three habits, at least this first quarter. Each quarter, um, set three habits. If they become habits um, by the end of the quarter, then you can come up with new ones. If they haven't, keep them going. Um, but there's a great example. I'm gonna go into more of this in a moment. I know we're over time here, but I'm just gonna keep cranking. Uh, sorry if you have to go, sorry for going over. Uh, I'm just gonna keep going here. You can watch the replay for the rest of this. I'm long-winded today, obviously. Okay, um, this is what it comes down to. Your wealth is a reflection of your daily habits. Really take a look at that. Your wealth is a reflection of your daily habits up until now. Your body weight is a reflection of your daily habits. Whether you like it or not, this is what it is. Your mood is a reflection of your daily habits. What you pay attention to becomes your life. So if you wanna change your life, change your habits. It's, it's really simple, it comes down to that. Speaking from experience, and I don't have it all figured out, I know that, I dropped the ball, there's habits I wanted to put in place, and the addictions take over, or whatever it might be, I dropped the ball, but then I pick myself up again, I say I'm better than I used to be, and I go at it again. So same type of thing. Uh, so that's about implementing. It's about we've envisioned it, come up with a strategy, you came up with your big three, um, you broke it down, you can break those big three into habits. So it's all about chunking it down into those little atomic habits, as James um, described them, and then implementing them, put it into action. Um, as Helen Keller once said, at least that's what it says on the internet, <laughs> ideas without action are useless, but I just love that one. Ideas without action are useless. So here's a way to implement those rituals and those habits. Um, this is a little bit um, from before. Most of these are about the same for me, but um, this is the way I used to track my habits. I used to actually create this. I made a little Word doc. And then basically I just wrote down, I started with three, and then some I wanted to keep on there because I didn't want to drop the ball on them. And I built up and then this is the, the habits I had. So what the way I worked it is, I'll, I'm gonna tell you how I track them now. But what I would do is say it's on Monday. If I did yoga, I would check it off. If I did my meditation, I would check off when I did something and I'd put an X if I didn't. And then every day, really simple process. I would just pull this out each morning and say, how did I do yesterday? I'd, yep, I did it, I did it, I didn't do it. And by the end of the week, I would have some totals and I could count across all those check marks and say, okay, I did. I did yoga seven times out of seven days. Meditation, oop, I missed Thursday. I got six out of seven. Morning review, six out of seven. And I would get a total for the week. And then, you know, this is all by hand, so I just write it down. And then at the end of the week, I would create my self-coaching form that I would send to my coach and it would look like this, my results. So this is where the accountability comes in. My coach could look at this and say, okay, nice. Okay, went great. 
uh, what happened with meditation? He wouldn't beat me up. He would just say, you know, what happened? What did you learn? How, how come you only got six out of seven, which is still pretty good. And I would learn and say, oh, here's what got in the way or here's why I didn't do it or whatever. And I would learn from that. And you'd say like, okay, what do you want to do differently this week? And it just constantly had me grow and learn and get better. So that's the way I used to track it works. If you're more of a hands-on paper-based person, this works really, really well. And then uh, my younger daughter, Krista, turned me on to, um, well, this is just, uh, I'm going to share that in a moment, uh, the Done app, but this is about uh, the Calm app. So one of those things you saw in there was that sometimes I would miss that meditation. And then I started using the Calm app, and that is my actual streak yesterday, 851 days in a row. And I don't share this to boast or anything or to brag. I'm just saying that this finally worked for me. When I gamified it, when I set up something that would track my streak, and then once I got to 30 days, I'm like, I don't want to break the streak. I've got 30 days in a row. And then I got to 365 days, and I'm like, I don't want to break the streak. I'm at a full year. And then I'm like, I want to try to make two years, and I did it. So now I'm on the, I want to make the streak three years, and I just, I don't want to miss. But because of that, breaking it down to small daily, um, the Calm app is only like 10 to 12 minutes every morning. I always do it first thing in the morning. Uh, I've invested 257 hours and 20 minutes in getting my mind calm, grounded, and I am so much more able to be present. And here's all the benefits. You can see them right there, gaining new perspectives on stressful situations. Like I said, the, the grounded wise stoic, I'm so much more that and I attribute it a lot to morning meditation. But there's all the benefits of that. I won't read through them all, but so many things, uh, especially the brain health and longevity. Um, I have a friend who's going through dementia. It's really sad, and it's you can do a lot of things for your brain health, everything from meditation to saunas to cold plunging and all this. So Kathy and I do everything we can to keep our brains healthy, and this is one of, the, one of those ways. All right. Um, going into that weekly coach self coaching form, I mentioned this is what I send to my coach. Um, but more than anything, it's doing it yourself each week. All you do is you write down, How did my week go? and you just write a quick little journal entry about how your week went, um, just for your own reflection and everything. Stopping and taking a reflection point once every seven days really powerful. Then you write down, What were your highlights of your week? What were your successes and wins? So often we step over those. We just keep looking ahead. Um, we look at what Dan Sullivan calls the gap of where we are to where we want to be. And that can create depression and sadness and be like, I'm not where I want to be. But when you look backwards and you say, wow, I'm better than I used to be. I've grown. How did I grow? What were my successes and wins this last week? Just taking a moment once a week to say, how was the week that just passed? It really, you get this nice dopamine hit. You're proud of yourself. You can pat yourself on the back and you just feel more fulfilled. And then the last one is what are the results of your big three from the last week? Remember, we talked about your big three for the year, your quarter, your month, and your week. This is where you put these are my commitments for this week. So you put that down. What are my big three for this coming week? So, what are my big three goals to accomplish this week? If I could do one thing for goal A, sorry, uh, one thing for goal A, uh, what would it be? And you write those down for the week. And that way you're checking in. You're saying, did I, did I hit those this week? It's a way to hold yourself accountable and even better, having someone else, a success partner or a professionally trained coach uh, is even more powerful. Okay, I mentioned this. This is what Krista, our younger daughter, told me about um, over a year ago. I use it every single day. The Done app, it's fantastic. I've turned a whole bunch of people onto this and um, even other coaches, other business leaders that I know, and they've come back and say, oh man, they'll send me a screenshot of their Done app. But it's just a way to gamify it and it will track your habits. You get to put in the habits that you want to track and then it really keeps it simple. You got your smartphone, you just flick it open and you can even set up reminders. So like at 6 p.m., Mine will do a little reminder, have you taken your supplements? And I'll be like, oh, so many times it'll remind me and I, I've forgotten to take my supplements. So the Done app, you might want to check that out. Another great way to implement heroic.us. Go and check that out. I use this every day. It's another way to track who you want to be. Um, these are similar to me. I have like a lean, agile athlete is one of mine. And you can set up the qualities that you want to be. And then you can also set intentions in here and track them. 
so anyway, just go and check it out. It's just loaded and loaded with everything from uh, resources, videos, training, and uh, what they call philosopher's notes, which is a 20 minute summary and a six page PDF of some of the best books I've done. I think they've done over a thousand books now. Some of the best books, you can absorb all the big ideas from those amazing books um, in a 20 minute audio. Fantastic. And then if you love it, you love the book, then you can go out and go buy it and, or get the audio book or something like that. So you might want to write that down, heroic.us. I'm not paid in any way for any of these recommendations. They're just stuff I believe in that I use that I've referred to other people um, and they just rock and they work. So that's why I'm sharing it with you. <laughs> so I want the best for you. And then the last one is stick. Um, stick is a one that is an incentive and accountability tool. Um, again, I've done this with my younger daughter, Krista, uh, where we would set up accountability. You can, um, you basically, you commit to a goal and each week there's a check-in on it. And if you've done it, great. If not, you can decide on like an anti-charity. Your money can go to the other person that you're betting against, or their money can go to a charity that you don't believe in, or it could be a super PAC or something like that in politics that you're like, I do not want to give them money, but it really turns the heat up. And if you're like, if you're really committed to something, um, set up stick with another person. Uh, you can even do it on your own. Um, but it's like, you just have to be honest with yourself and it holds you accountable in a very, very powerful way. Okay, so we went through envisioning, strategizing, implementing. Um, I want to quickly talk about the people and the who's uh, on your team. Uh, I just think you might want to take a picture of this or a screenshot. Um, this is what Kathy and I have found to be the most important people on your team, your personal team. Of course, our team at Real Wealth is invaluable and amazing, um, but this is more of your you want a really good investment counselor, someone who's going to help guide you, whether that be a financial advisor or like an investment counselor at Real Wealth. Uh, having a bookkeeper is absolutely vital. It's been a game changer for us to know where we are with our net worth, our monthly cash flow, tracking our investments. So we don't have to do it. We can focus on our own unique strengths. Uh, having a personal assistant, uh, assistant is very, very valuable, frees you up to focus on what you love to do. Uh, having a great CPA and a tax attorney, also absolutely vital if you want to get to that place of financial freedom, huge. Um, having great property managers for your investment properties, um, I would highly say don't try to do it yourself. I've tried to do that in the past. I'm terrible at it. Um, and then having a professional coach, like I said, I've had one for many, many years. I still have a coach, even though I'm a trained and certified coach and I work with my own clients. I still have a coach because they, uh, he holds up the mirror and has me really take a look at how I'm living, who I'm being, really powerful. Um, I mean, here's a great thing from another one from Gary Keller and Jay Papazon. Um, they looked at a bunch of studies and research and they found this. People who write their goals down, and this is what you're doing right today, are 39.5% more likely to succeed. People who write their goals down and they share their progress with people they've chosen to hold them accountable are 76.7% .7 more likely to achieve them. So like, gotta write your goals down. And if you really wanna up your chances of achieving those goals, find someone to hold you accountable, a success partner or a coach. I'm a huge fan of coaching, I'm not promoting myself here. I only work with three clients at a time. Um, Coachfederation.org is where you can find a skilled certified coach who really knows what they're doing. There's a lot of people calling themselves coaches nowadays and some of them just suck and they shouldn't be doing it. Uh, so I'm passionate about this. I was very involved in the formation of the Coaching Federation 25 years ago. Now it's the federation for coaching worldwide. Um, just massive, I think 150,000 coaches in there. Uh, but anyway, you can see all the benefits of coaching right there. I won't go into reading every one, but you can see that. But if you're looking for a quality coach, go to coachfederation.org. It's a nonprofit, it's free. They have a coach finding service. So you can type in what you're looking for and you can help find it. It'll help you find a coach for you in your price bracket and with the experience and what you're looking for, what kind of coaching you're looking for. 
Uh, we talked a little bit about your wealth team. Uh, having a bookkeeper is a game changer. Having an executive assistant. Um, this is who Kathy and I use. Is we use them at Real Wealth. We've hired uh, a, a couple executive assistants from Belay. They're fantastic. Uh, Belay only hires 1% of the people who apply to work at Belay. Uh, so you might want to check them out if you're looking for an amazing bookkeeper, which we've hired three bookkeepers through Belay, or an amazing executive assistant. Reach out to Lucy over there, lucy.faxon, uh, faxon at belaysolutions.com. And they, if you mention that you're a Real Wealth member, um, they'll give you $700 off your kickoff. Like they have someone who strategizes with you and really finds out what you're looking for. And they they do like an hour deep dive to find out what you want. And then they go and that person is that client success um, person is going to help you help find someone who aligns with you. I think that's why we've been so successful with their, who they found for us. Then just a final reminder before we wrap up that learning never exhausts the mind. I'm always sharing this. We have tons of free resources on realwealth.com. So go there, all those webinars, um, blog articles, the Real Wealth Show, and everything. We're constantly putting out content for you to improve your financial intelligence. It's, it's, it's just so powerful. Uh, I just wanted to quickly share some of the books that were stands out stand out to me. I shared this in the last webinar. Um, for real estate, real estate by the numbers, phenomenal. Just came out this last year. Uh, Arnold's new book, now a New York Times bestseller, Be Useful, fantastic. He's he accomplished some amazing things. Obviously, as a weightlifter, he is a huge uh, inspiration. It has been a huge inspiration to me, um, but I think it's probably an inspiration to millions. And then 10X is easier than 2X. Dan Sullivan and Ben Hardy, who I mentioned before, a uh, fantastic book about uh, achieving more by doing less. And so it's not the 10 X about grinding and throwing your life out of balance. It's about finding out how to 10 X your life, uh, really focusing on what you love doing and what's your unique strength. Uh, and then these three books as well, uh, wrap up with these, be your future self. Now Ben Hardy's book, be your future self is excellent. Uh, it came out last year. Uh, he writes in the book that the, the book isn't about becoming, it's about being. So future self, I've been doing the future self visualization in this program now for the past 18 years. So I wish I had this book way back then to recommend when I would do future self, but now it's out. I mean, I wish I wrote the book back then. I'm kind of kicking myself when I saw this title, but uh, it's a really good book and it takes what we did in future self um, into kind of implementation into today. How can you be that future self now? How can you be that? Outlive is great about um, the science and art of longevity from Peter Atia. It's packed, it's a huge thick book, but filled with amazing stuff. If you wanna live longer and increase your health span more than just your lifespan, awesome. And Arate is by Brian Johnson. He's the founder of heroic.us. Finally came out with a book and it's phenomenal for just really short chapters. You can open it anywhere and really get some amazing wisdom there on being your best self. And of course, my beautiful wife's amazing book, Retire Rich with Rentals. It's great if you haven't read it. Real Wealth Show podcast, Real Estate News for, uh, for Investors podcast, fantastic. Uh, I love Kathy's quote, financial intelligence is sexy. This is what's at the top of her Instagram page. And then this great book uh, came out over a year ago now, but it has be, been a number one Amazon bestseller in both business motivation and self-improvement and real estate investment several times. So I'm really stoked on that. I'm really happy with the way it was received. Uh, it's a parable. If you have read it or listened to it, thank you. Thank you for all the feedback. Thank you for leaving reviews on Amazon. If you have you read it and you haven't left a review, please do. My publisher says it really helps a lot, um, but it's on hardcover. Kindle, Audible, um, and it's just a compelling story where you get a lot of financial um, freedom lessons and also lessons similar to what we learned about today, but going deeper. Okay, so moving ahead for you, please, as you move ahead, stay aware of your theme for the year. Have a way to remind yourself of that on a regular basis. I would say weekly minimum reading your theme. Continue to develop your key personal quality. What is that one personal quality you're gonna work on this year? Keep reminding yourself of that throughout the year. So by the end of the year, you're like, yes, I have developed that. Review your big three goals consistently 
at least once a week. Um, every morning is even better. Stay disciplined, follow through on those rituals that you've set. It, it's a game changer. You're gonna change your brain. You're gonna change your neural makeup. Um, build that team of experts for advice and support. Um, hopefully you took a screenshot of that. Build that team. It will be a game changer um, for your wealth and your financial freedom and real wealth and so many things. And please do today what your future self will thank you for. All right, everyone. Sorry for going over so much. I get in, I'm into this stuff, so I just can't stop. So anyway, uh, here's to a fun, fulfilling, and focused 2024. Um, if you want to reach out to me or connect with me, uh, at Rich Fetke is my handle on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. If you want to DM me, if you want to connect or chat, um, would love to see you over there and connect with you that way. And that's it. Wishing you the best this year. Thanks again for being here. Uh, again, this replay will be up probably in about 24 hours. And then next Thursday is the amazing Kathy Fedke's yearly prediction webinar next Thursday at noon. This is our most attended webinar all year long. It's the most replayed webinar all year long at Real Wealth. Kathy comes in and takes all of her wisdom and knowledge and from all the mentors and experts she has and she takes a look at what's going to be happening in 2024 when it comes to finances, the market, and real estate. And she also vulnerably looks back at the predictions she made at the beginning of 2023, and she will share wh where she was on and where she was off. It's really cool. So hopefully you can attend that next Thursday at noon with the amazing and beautiful Catherine Fetke. Thanks, everyone. See you later. Bye-bye.